Hello everyone. This is Dr. Neeraj Kherwal. I'm working as head of blockchain research and development at Layer One X. Today, after setting up the environment, we are going to see how to build your first smart contract on L One X VM. So we'll start with creating the L One X project using Cargo L One X. So the first thing that we need to notice is we need to give the project name in this command as well as we are using the template for the ft that is fungible token i'll copy this command and i'll just paste it change the project name say i'll name the project to fungible token okay and run this command so this will create the contract using the template so let us see what has actually been created so i'll run the code command so that in code we can see what has been done so we'll be able to notice the different folders and files that have been created in demo l1x projects fungible token this is the project that we are referring to we have the source file the cargo toml the lib.rs so as we can notice we have the smart contract deployed for the fungible token we also have the cargo toml file where the package and its dependencies are mentioned so we'll go back to our gitbook the next step that we need to do is we need to traverse to the project so we'll go to the fungible token project that we created just now and next command is to compile it that is cargo elmix build and we'll run it so through this command what will happen is the contract will get compiled and the object file would be created so once this is done we'll be required to deploy the smart contract so in order to deploy the smart contract we need to have a wallet with some balance so in case you don't have a wallet what you'll be required to do is create wallet and in case you already have a wallet in that case you simply need to import the wallet you need to provide your private key here and you will be able to import it you can also set the wallet as the default wallet uh, this is particularly required when you would have multiple wallets so which one is to be used as default or else if in case you have a single wallet that would serve as the default wallet so let us see okay so the contract has got compiled and if you notice contract object file elmonix_ft.o has been built so let us check we'll go to the code so this is the target folder we have inside which i'll go to elmonix first and then to the elmonix release elmonix underscore ft dot o so the object file has been created. Next step that we want to do is I want to create a wallet. I'll simply run this command. Make sure that you are using Node version eighteen. So wallet has been created with the address and the private key. We need to store these details because in future. you would use it okay next is to set default so i'll set it as my default wallet and as i said this is since this is the only wallet i have it will serve as the default wallet so i need to give what wallet address which means the address we have here so this has been set to default wallet next is i need to have some balance right so i need to get some faucets from the testnet so we'll go to the endpoints this is this is the endpoint for testnet faucet i click on the link and i need to enter my wallet address here so this is um, the wallet address we have right I'll simply copy it again, put it here, 
and try to get some Elvenix coins. So once I have this Elvenix coins, I'll check whether my wallet has got credited. So yes, we have got 0.1 Elvenix. I'll just go back. Okay, so now the next step is to actually check whether my wallet has got the balance. So I'll go to the Elvenix CLI methods and check the command which is for checking the balance. So this is the command. I'll simply paste it here. I need to give what address in the endpoints. So address, I'll replace it with my wallet address. In the endpoint that I need to specify, sorry, endpoint where I need to check. So we are currently working on the testnet uh, RPC. So what is the endpoint for? testnet so see here we can see the testnet for elonix vn evm this is the one i'll simply copy it and put it here okay so this is the endpoint and we'll try to check the balance in our wallet okay so yes our wallet has got credited it has got 0.1 elonix which is equivalent to 10 days to 18 in L1X. So next, um, we'll go back to our git book where we were working on. Now I need to deploy the L1X project. For this, I'll simply copy the example command, paste it here. And if you notice, what we are required to specify here is the path for the object file so as we had seen inside the fungible token we have target elvenix release and then this object file name so i need to give this object path in the same way this dot slash is actually representing that related to this folder where exactly is my object file so it is inside our uh, target l1x release release okay so let us try to deploy it once the smart contact is deployed we will be getting the deployed contact address which we will use to initialize the project. So while initializing, we actually need to take care of two things. First is to provide the deployed contact address. And second thing is the arguments which are specific to your smart contract. Okay, so the project has got deployed. Next, I'll move on to this command to initialize the smart contract. So this is the command to initialize the smart contract as uh, we just discussed. First of all, I'll replace the deploy contact address with the actual value which we have just now received. I'll just remove this double quotes and comma which have got copied by mistake. Okay. We have specified the endpoint. We have specified the fee limit as well. And now comes the details or arguments related to the smart contract. So what is the token name I would like to give? So say I'm giving the name as Elvenix Demo FT. Okay. And the decimals are 18. What is the symbol I would like to give for my token? So I am giving as Elvenix DFT. And I'm keeping rest of the details as null. And we'll, we are trying to initialize the smart contract. So once the smart contract is initialized, okay, it has got initialized, we'll be getting this contract address. That is nothing but the 
initialized contact address this initialized contact address is actually used in further commands which can be a read only function or a state changing function so we'll just try to run this read only function call so in this we are actually trying to run ft underscore name this is nothing but a simple method to get the name of the fungible token and i am replacing the init contact address with the actual instance contact address so let us see okay so i am able to get the name of my token which is l1x demo ft next comes is state changing function call so in this case uh, we will try to run the command so if you see the arguments that are passed let us have a quick look at this page common flags and arguments the very first one that we have is endpoint so endpoint we have listed here where you can see the endpoints for mainnet testnet and the testnet faucet coming back here from is nothing but the wallet address from which you want to run the transaction in our case we have already set the default wallet so i can skip this um argument next what we have is fee limit we need to specify the maximum fee limit for the transaction that we are running and nuns so nuns we can provide the nuns if not then cli will automatically fetch the nuns and use it from the wallet address so going back to the command i want specify nuns and specifying my fee limit as uh, 1 lakh tokens from i don't need to specify end point definitely will specify as the testnet and copy paste it here okay and uh, init contact address this will specify okay i'll just select it okay next comes which function i would call so i'll simply go to the smart contract and see which is the right function or the state changing function call so definitely there are many so um i will actually try to okay work on this one ft mint ft underscore mint so if you notice what are the input parameters getting passed in this one we have recipient id and amount so these are the two input parameters or the arguments that we need to pass to the ft mint function so i'll just call this and arguments that we need to pass so we'll follow the format for the arguments inside single quotes we have curly braces and the arguments that we need to pass in the double quotes so the very first one we had is recipient id i'll simply copy it so that uh, we don't make any spelling mistake or anything as such so what is the recipient id is nothing but the owner of the ft so in this case what i would like to have is my wallet address itself as the ft so i can fetch my wallet address from here right and uh, see that is the reason i told you that we need to save it and keep okay i need to have it inside the double quotes okay so this is the recipient id and next is the variable amount how much fts i want to be minted so say i want to mint 1000 sorry 1000 fts so let us run this command everything else is set right 
So it will use the default wallet address. And yes, this function had got run successfully. Okay, so we have been able to run this command and mint the FTs. Now, what I would like to do is I would just like to check the say balance. So we have this command FT balance of which I would like to run. I'll simply copy it and we need to give the account ID as the input. So this is the read command we had. We already have the wallet, um, the instance address here and we will just put the function name that we want to run and what are the arguments for this. So as we notice, we have the account ID as the argument. So I'll specify the arguments. And what do I want to specify is account ID. Okay, it seems that it has not got copied. Okay, I'll simply mention it. Okay. And then we will specify the wallet address, right? Because it has got minted to this wallet address. Okay, so there has been a mistake from my end um, while passing the parameter. Spelling mistake actually. Typo error. Oh, this is account ID. So, oh, oh. this is the account ID. So, yes, we are able to see 1000. That is, the FTs have got minted. So, one thing that we can notice is, if we are trying to run a function, with wrong arguments, you will be getting such kind of error, fail to deserialize input from JSON. Okay. And then uh, this is how we are able to successfully actually uh, build our first smart contract with the actual compilation, deployment, initialization. And then we have also done the read-only function call and state changing function calls. So, uh, in case you face any issues or any errors, please let us know in the comments and we will try to provide the solution. Thank you so much. See you for in the next video. Bye.